You might have seen my viral clip about Amazon AWS paying a $65,000 yearly mission bonus just for people having a government security clearance. And if you haven't seen it, here it is right here. Amazon is paying people up to $60,000 per year to have a full scope polygraph clearance. They got different levels, right? So you're asking what type of clearance you need to have to get paid this big money by Amazon just for having a clearance. So um, I believe for their top secret clearance, they pay 25,000 a year. For a CI poly, they pay $45,000 a year. And then for a full scope poly, they pay up to $60,000 per year. So if you have a government security clearance and you aren't trying to work for Amazon, I think you're tripping. That's how valuable clearances are to companies. They are willing to pay you almost $100,000 per year just for having one. And this is not the only case of companies paying you a yearly bonus of having a clearance or companies just paying you more amount of money on top of your salary just for having a clearance either. So once you get a government security clearance, it puts you in a completely different realm of tech professionals. And the reason why it puts you in a completely different realm is because only one in five people have a government security clearance and even less than that are technical professionals so once you combine the clearance with your tech background you are literally in a completely different league people want clearances so bad they're joining the military at 40 years old just to get one and it's crazy because you don't even need to join the military to get a government security clearance i got my government security clearance at 18 years old i've never served a single day in the military i was able to get a government security clearance by working a it internship and everybody that worked at this credit union needed to have a clearance. That is how I got my clearance. And that's also how I help other people get clearances as well. I help them locate places that will sponsor them for government security clearance without having to join the military or do anything unnecessary that you don't need to do just to get the clearance. Once you have a government security clearance, you're guaranteed to make six figures according to Clearance Jobs. Clearance Jobs has recently released our 2025 security clearance compensation report, revealing key insights into national security, salaries, and workforce trends. Now, despite the uncertainty of today's climate, cleared professionals did see a nearly 4% salary increase, pushing the average pay to $119,131 the highest ever recorded. In this video, I'll be teaching you step-by-step -step on how you can gain a government security clearance without joining the military and how it unlocks a six-figure guaranteed salary for the rest of your life. So what is a government security clearance? A government security clearance is basically a more in-depth background check that the government performs on you to see if you are somebody who is worthy to be able to have access to classified information and secret government data. And when the government is doing this background check on you, the main thing they want to know is, can they trust you? When people lie to the government when it comes to government security clearances, it literally makes no sense. The government already has your ID. They already have your records of travel. So if you have a passport and even now with the real ID, they know where you're traveling to. They also know where you've lived at if you've ever filed taxes, which I hope you have. And the government already knows your financial background and your criminal background as well. So there's no need to lie lie to them. So as soon as you lie to the government, you automatically fail the government security clearance test because it just shows that you're untrustworthy, even though you already know the government knows everything about you. I don't want to get too deep into all of the details about getting government security clearances, but basically the way that the process works is pretty straightforward. What you need to do to get a government security clearance is first find a job that's going to sponsor you for a government security clearance. And I'm going to tell you exactly how to do that in this video. After you find a job that's sponsor you for a government security clearance, you'll interview for the role. And once you land the job, you'll start working your job. After you start working, your security officer will give you the paperwork to fill out. Well, now it's not actual paperwork. Everything's electronic. But when I first did my clearance, it was actual paper. But the security officer will send you your documents to fill out. And this is called an equip. And you'll fill out an SF-86 form with this equip. And after you fill this out, they'll ask you all kinds of information such as where you've worked at, where you've lived at, where you've traveled to. They'll ask you also about any type of foreign context. They'll ask you about bankruptcies. They'll also ask you about if you've ever utilized any drugs before. And utilizing drugs does not disqualify you from getting a clearance. They also ask you about your criminal background as well. And they'll ask
ask you about your friends and family as well. And they're just really trying to get a full picture of you, your background, what you've been doing, and if they can trust you with government secrets. So I typically like to tell people that if you don't have any terrorist ties, if you can pass a background check similar to pre-check, global entry, or if you've ever had a Twit card, that's a good step forward towards getting a clearance. And if you won't lie to the government, you have a pretty good chance of getting a government security clearance. So I'll quickly dive into some things that could disqualify you for a government security clearance. Some things that could disqualify you is too much personal debt. Student loans are fine, but let's say you have $200,000 of credit card debt. You're falling behind on your bills. You're missing payments. You have a lot of things in collections. That is when the government looks at you as a financial risk. Now, if you've had a bankruptcy, this will not disqualify you, but the government will want to see how you've done financially after your bankruptcy. Are you falling back into those same habits or have you cleaned up your financial background? Another thing that can disqualify you is misdemeanors and felonies, but it is all case by case, okay? If you haven't seen my interview that I've done with my friend Rakis, he actually works at AWS right now and he initially had a clearance, then he ended up getting a felony and then he lost his clearance and then he got his clearance back. So if you haven't seen that interview yet, definitely make sure you check it out. If you're somebody who wants to know more about how the process is, if you are a felon trying to get a clearance. Another thing that can disqualify you is having terrorist ties or having ties to arms dealers. That's something that the government obviously is not going to be okay with. So if you don't have any of those issues and you won't lie to the government, you should be able to get a government security clearance. Now, when it comes to getting a government security clearance, it is not as difficult as people think. Since the government has to look through your background and most people have no idea how how to get a government security clearance outside of joining the military, most people just don't have one and that's what makes it so valuable. By having this government security clearance, it's gonna allow you to get access into other technical programs that most people won't have access to. When you look to apply for jobs, there will be a lot of jobs out there that will already say that you must have a government security clearance. So if you don't have a clearance, you're not gonna be able to apply to those roles at all, which is why the clearance is so valuable just because there's only a small subset of technical professionals with the clearance. And you'd be surprised at which big tech companies have roles that work with the government and support the government. I consider this the best of both worlds when it comes to working in tech because you can work at a big tech company and make the high salaries by working at companies like Tesla, Facebook, also known as Meta now, Amazon, Microsoft, Google, and you have the job security of having a government security clearance. So when you combine these two aspects together, it puts you in a completely different league. A lot of people wonder why I talk about clearances so much and it's because of the fact that AI is here. With AI being here you'll see tech companies trying to automate roles. They're looking to utilize AI to completely get rid of software engineering roles and they're definitely looking for ways to cut down on money and to just stop hiring people overall. But when you have a government security clearance you will not be eliminated because of the AI wave that is here. So who's eligible for a government security clearance? You must be a U.S. citizen. You must be able to pass a background check and you must be somebody who will not lie to the government. So if you wanna be protected by this AI wave, I highly suggest you look at getting a government security clearance and working at these tech companies or either working for a government contractor company, which is what I've been doing for pretty much my entire tech career. So when it comes to government security clearances, you have different levels of clearances that are out there. This first one is really not even a clearance. It's a basic background check and it typically only takes about two to three weeks to get. So this first level is called a public trust. Now, a public trust is just a regular background check. You don't have to fill out a long SF-86. You actually fill out a form called an SF-85. So these are pretty easy to get. They don't take that long and they don't really add too much job security to you, but it is a great start if you have to start out with a public trust. The next level of clearances is a secret clearance. Secret clearances, that's when you're really getting started in the clearance game. A secret clearance can take anywhere from one to three months to get. It's not very difficult to get as long as you meet those requirements that I talked about earlier. And with the secret clearances, you can work for the federal government, you could work for a government contractor company, you could work for one of the FANG companies, or you could even work overseas like I did as well. The next level of clearances is top secret. It typically takes anywhere from six to 12 months to get, and they do look deeper into your background. They also will look deeper into your family ties and your friends and things like that. But if you're okay with these things, I definitely recommend that you try to go for a top secret clearance. Remember at the beginning of this video where I talked about Amazon giving out those yearly bonuses? Well, when it comes to Amazon for top secret clearances,
bonuses, they give a $25,000 yearly bonus. Oracle gives out yearly bonuses as well for clearance holders too. The next level of clearance is top secret SCI. So this is basically saying that you are able to get access to special compartmentalized information. And that's just a fancy way of saying like secret programs. That's pretty much all it is. And now we get to the toughest level of clearances, which is the clearances that require you to get a polygraph. So that's a lie detector test if you aren't familiar with the term polygraph. With this polygraph level, we have two different types of polygraphs that you can get. You have a top secret SCI, CI polygraph, which stands for counterintelligence. And with this one, they're mostly just trying to see, are you a terrorist? Do you have terrorist ties? Are you loyal to the US? When it comes to these polygraph clearances, they take anywhere from 18 to 24 months to get. The next type of polygraph clearance, which is one that a lot of people do not want to get whatsoever, is called a full scope lifestyle polygraph clearance. You'll also see this on job description and it'll say TSSEI FSP or just full scope poly or lifestyle poly. There's many different ways that they show it on the job descriptions. But when it comes to these full scope polygraphs, what they want to know is more about your lifestyle. They want to know about, you know, what you do in your free time. Do you have anything in your background that you could potentially be blackmailed for? That's really what they want to know when it comes to these polygraph clearances. So if you're interested in working for the NSA or CIA or CISA or DISA or DIA or DARPA, you're definitely going to need to get a full scope polygraph clearance. There are other companies that could require it as well if they support any of these intelligence community agencies. So there's a bunch of different intelligence community agencies. And if you want to look them up, you literally can just Google intelligence community and you'll see a lot of different intelligence community agencies that are out there that would require you to get this level of clearance. Now, you do not need to go this high if you don't want to, right? You don't need to get a full scope polygraph or even a CI polygraph if you're not comfortable with it. Because when you go and apply to jobs that are sponsoring clearances, they'll tell you exactly what type of clearance you'll get when you apply to that role. And the last level of clearance, which is the highest level, is called the Yankee White. So a Yankee White clearance is for people that work at the White House. If you don't plan on working at the White House, you plan on working remotely, you don't have any interest on doing anything like that, you probably will never get a Yankee White. There aren't many people with Yankee White clearances. Obviously, the people who do have them are in the DC area. And those are all the different levels of clearances. And now I want to get into how you actually find the jobs that are sponsoring these clearances. So to find these jobs that are sponsoring these clearances, it's actually pretty simple. What you need to do and what I recommend for most people, if you want to land a job that's going to sponsor you for a clearance really quickly, is go to clearancejobs.com. Once you go to clearancejobs.com, you'll just type in ability to to obtain and after you type in ability to obtain you will see all of these different jobs that are sponsoring clearances then from there you can go to category and select all of the different IT categories and then you'll find all of the different IT jobs that are sponsoring clearances on clearance jobs and people might be thinking well is there anybody even hiring anymore right now because of everything happening with the government but yes they actually are still hiring I hosted a event with clearance jobs and during that event event, Clearance Jobs told me that in 2025, they've had more job postings this year than they did in 2024. So there's so much opportunity right now for you to get a job. I've had multiple interviews, multiple job offers, even other students that are in my community have had multiple job offers as well. So if you're interested in getting these type of roles, they're out here for you. You just need to put in the work and go look for them. Another place that you can go to find a clearance, it's really slow, but it's going to be usajobs.gov. And this is where you're going to find the federal government jobs that will be sponsoring clearances for you. So once you go into usajobs.gov and you're looking for tech roles, what you want to do is find the IT management series. And to find those, you'll just type in 2210, which is 2210. That is the IT management job series. And for all of these jobs, you don't need a degree. They'll sponsor your clearance. And they just want to see that you actually have experience or either transferable skills that align to the role that you're applying for. And another place that you can find job sponsoring clearances is going to be on the big tech websites like AWS or Microsoft or even Google. They sponsor clearances as well, but you have to really be on it because obviously it's a much higher competition to get a job with these big tech companies. So that's really a crash course on government security clearances, why you should get one, why they are so valuable, and how it's going to help you future proof yourself now that AI is here. You really have to think about how you're going to survive 
long term when it comes to being a tech professional. I believe there are going to be many people that are going to be flocking towards these jobs in the GovTech sector because they know how valuable these clearances are. And you don't want to be one of the last people that finally realizes, oh, wow, you know, I should have got that clearance when I saw the video that Simone put up years ago. So if you're ready to make your transition into the GovTech industry, I have a 100% free course here on YouTube and you can find it in the description below. It's about an hour long, but I walk you through everything that you need to know step by step to land your first GovTech role, whether you have experience or whether you don't have experience. So make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any more videos.